Welcome to Reach the World ASAP. My name is Pastor Scott Griswold, working with ASAP Ministries, and I'm here with Pastor Tony Jasper. Would you please tell us about where you're living, what you're doing? There's an exciting mission field here that people need to know about. Sure. Um, I'm pastoring in the St. Paul area, which is part of a, a larger metropolis called the St. Paul Minneapolis, or Twin Cities. Mm -hmm. And our Twin Cities is a very diverse uh, environment. We have a lot of people of color, a lot of people from other countries. Many of them don't speak English. It's really a fascinating place to live and to work. And um, we have uh, this wonderful opportunity in our churches to minister to these people who um, have come to our country for the first time and who are um, adjusting to life in our country, in our culture, in our language, and, and things that we take for granted, but they are learning for the first time. So. The church that you're pastoring, that we're in right now, the Eastside Church, is not unfamiliar with this kind of thing. They have been birthing congregations out of this church. Tell us just a little bit, who has come through here, what's happened? Well, uh, there have been four mm -hmm. uh, different uh, ethnic churches that have come uh, out of our congregation. Uh, we uh, just uh, got um, the Karen Church started in their own place a couple years ago. And we have in our facility a Hmong church meeting in the afternoons on Sabbath. And we, uh, a few years ago, uh, launched a Russian church as well as a Hispanic church. That's incredible. That's really, really fun to hear. Because it takes a lot of energy for a church to open up its place. I mean, because you have new interactions, people seeing things in different ways, different levels of understanding of what should happen in the church and what shouldn't it's just going to be very messy but it it means a huge amount for the instant the Korean church that i visited yesterday they're meeting 250 people in their own place now what if what if this church had never given them that opportunity to worship in their own language and insisted that they just join in and listen into english if they could well, there's two things. There's, there's something special about the church and there's something special about our community. So in our community, we have uh, around the East Side Church, uh, a population that's 65% diverse, meaning 65% wow. wow. of the people I meet on the street are not like me. <laughs> and so there's that. Our congregation is even more diverse. Wow. And, and they, they happen to be from the same parts of the world, Sub-Saharan Africa, Central and South America, and Southeast Asia, our congregation and the community. So um, this provides us a very uh, amazing opportunity to, to witness and to minister cross-culturally. I love it. It was so fun for me to go out with our, our group that was at the Reach the World Next Door training. And we just went down the streets in every direction, knocking on doors, just saying, we want to say hello. We want to get to know our neighbors from our church. And they loved it. They were people from every background. I, I got to speak Thai with somebody who was a Hmong from Laos because uh, she had lived in, in the refugee camps. What an incredible missionary opportunity. We knocked on doors and like almost every other door, you're going to meet somebody mm -hmm. from another country, mm -hmm. from another part of the world who's come here to our city uh, as their new home. Some of them with no, uh, they don't know anybody, they don't have any social network, they don't uh, have the requisite job skills, they don't have um, even the proper clothing to live in Minnesota winter. And, and all these things provide us an opportunity to reach into their world and, and to share a little bit about what we do to get by uh, in, in these, uh, this kind of environment. That's fantastic. Now, not every pastor who's in this kind of a situation takes and does something about it. Many just continue to focus on their own people group. Um, what is your hope? What is your desire? How, how, is, how is it that you're going in this direction? Well, I get roped into this because, well, part of it is my own background. So I, I have a missionary background. I was 10 years overseas working cross-culturally with different uh, people all over the world. Mm -hmm. And that's part of it. But a couple of years ago, I was asking God, what would you want me to do? Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I had come upon some statistics uh, in the Twin City area over the next 25 years. Uh, we will see an increase in our foreign born population uh, uh, and, and, and by 2040, 
we're going to see 46% of our population uh, 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 of people being born in a country other than the United States. 46%. That's like one out of every two people we cross on the street weren't born here. So you saw the need and you just said, we've got to do something about this. Well, that, that was one of the things God did to tap his finger mm -hmm. on my shoulder. So there's me, who I am, my background, and then there's my community. But then also there, there's the church that I pastor. And, and I, I, I once asked my congregation, raise your hand if you were not born in the United States. Mm -hmm. And they, when they did, they looked around the congregation. They were surprised to see how many in our church were not born here. Mm -hmm. They live here, they immigrated here, but they were not born here. And so I just asked them to think about what was it like when you first came? Think about that time mm -hmm. when you first came. You didn't know anybody, wow. any, you didn't know where stores were. You didn't know where to buy food or clothing. You didn't know how to rent a house or buy a house in America. What was that like mm -hmm. for you? What would you have wished happened in your life? And could you extend that to somebody else who's just arriving? So what are you doing to help your church then be able to reach out and do the work God has given you to do. Well, when it comes to this cross-cultural piece, one of the things we've been able to do, Scott, is to invite you to our church. Now, we didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. You have a wonderful training kit that, that has digital Scott uh, on, on DVD, and we could have played you, and we will be playing your, um, your training kit mm -hmm. uh, to our members. Um, but having you here on the launch enabled people to, uh, to interact with live, Scott, and to ask questions and to get uh, your stories and, and to see your passion uh, for uh, foreign-born people, people who are displaced, people who come to this country mm -hmm. with nothing and, what, what, and asking the question, what can we do? And you have uh, given us an opportunity to um, be, learn how to be friends. Wow. Oh, it's been so much fun. Not only going outside and doing it door to door, but interacting with one another about different cultures. I've just had so much fun doing it. Um, so I'm really grateful to you that you've been organizing this, getting other churches in, in Minnesota involved, and getting your church members out caring and loving. So we'll be praying for you and we'll want to keep in touch with what happens. This work is so important. If I understand the writings of Ellen White correctly, it's reaching people from other lands who live in our neighborhoods, in our communities, that will extend the work of the three angels into the world and finish this work that we are called to do as Seventh-day Adventists. Mm -hmm. If my reading is correct, we must do this and we need to do it well. Uh -huh. Thank you for uh, helping us do that. Thank you so much. It's very exciting to any of you who are catching the vision, who are seeing that you could be doing something in your universities with international students, the refugees, the immigrants that are coming your way, pretty much anywhere now in North America you can go. You will find an international friend if you just look with open eyes. If you would like to know more about how to reach out to them, you can go directly to the site reachtheworldnextdoor.com and there you will see many of the ideas that are in the kit and then you can order it by calling us at ASAP Ministries or going online to asapministries.org. God bless you. God bless the people here in St. Paul, Minnesota. May we together reach the world ASAP.